Welcome to an introduction to Passive House. This is part two of a five-part series. In this episode, we'll review what the Passive House discovery was all about and look at some of its many benefits. So what changed? What was the discovery of this Passive House experiment? What flipped in our thinking that makes it so distinctive? Well, what came out of this research was the essential power of the Passive House concept. Traditionally, the focus is first on efficiency alone and achieving comfort and health, really in spite of energy efficiency. Efficiency geeks, as we might say, would see efficiency as the first order of business and the other benefits as secondary. But with Passive House, this thinking is turned on its head. With Passive House, the focus on occupant comfort and health are first, and it is this focus on comfort and health that drives performance, that drives efficiency. Passive house starts with the occupant. Per the purely functional, shall we say, platonic or idealized definition, as it was distilled, we quote, a passive house is a building for which thermal comfort, ISO 7730, can be achieved solely by post-heating or post-cooling of the fresh air mass, which is required to achieve sufficient indoor air quality conditions without the need for additional recirculation of air. This describes maintaining comfort and health with 100% fresh air with a very low capacity for heating and cooling energy. You need a very energy-efficient building to achieve this. Consequently, health, comfort, and efficiency are all working in the same direction, all supporting each other. So we have what's really a comfort and health standard producing an energy standard, the passive house standard. This diagram shows homes, but it could be any type of building with heat losses below the middle line of equilibrium and heat gains above the line. We could also flip this to be about cooling in a hot climate. In the old, very leaky and modern, moderately leaky, shall we say, homes, large active heating systems are required to bring the building into balance, as the gains above must equal the losses below. While the passive house building requires a tiny fraction of the energy to be brought into balance, this dramatic reduction in heating and cooling demand demonstrates the power of the optimized passive architectural structure we see that the building has done most of the work to bring the energy flows into balance, and it is just topped off with active systems. This new reality will flip our expectations. It's a flip that we've experienced with our computer industry, where our computers get ever more powerful while using much less energy. And so too, Passive House decouples power from performance. Passive House provides a clear pathway to decouple and frees us to deliver zero carbon buildings today. This is game changing. So let's look at what Passive House delivers. The Passive House concept starts with the occupant, as we've said, and moves outward. What makes us comfortable? Well, how about steady temperatures? No drafts, no cold feet. How about peace and quiet? How about sitting by the window on a cold winter day and feeling comfortable? Passive House also provides hygienic indoor air quality, 100% fresh air and exhaust with no recirculation. It's filtered fresh air, keeping pollution out, no mold and associated illnesses, reduced asthma and allergies. Passive House also provides resilience that we can shelter in place indefinitely in the winter. And in the summer, we can shelter in place for an extended period, long enough for the power company to get things up and running again. This example is from a home in Brooklyn, New York, several polar vortexes ago. The black line is the exterior temperature, diving down and staying freezing for four days. The red line is the interior temperature. It's not a flat line, but steady. And we see the one moment when the family turned on the heat during the week. Passive House supports equity by delivering high quality, comfortable and healthy homes that cost dramatically less to operate. The dramatic reduction in energy usage also protects people from possible future energy price shocks. This is an affordable housing development for seniors in Queens, New York, that also has a pre-K school on the ground floor. 
Passive House first scaled in Europe with affordable housing projects. And today in the U.S., we see affordable housing advocates incentivizing and encouraging Passive House building. Passive House supports our country's transition to a green grid and electrified future. The dramatic energy reduction Passive House buildings provide makes removing fossil fuels from buildings much more economical. And with renewable energy options available on-site and off-site, Passive House makes grid utilization more efficient and resilient. Consequently, the more Passive Houses we build, less renewable production is ultimately needed, making our green transition more affordable and more quickly achievable. I hope you enjoyed this segment. Be sure to watch part three on how the Passive House discovery challenges us to rethink and reimagine buildings.